everyone, welcome to another video. So today we're going to be having a look at the character representations for the Sweeney. If you haven't already, have a look at the character representations for Luther, which I posted the other day, and that will give you some idea of characters in crime drama as a whole. The idea with these character descriptions and representations is that I'm not going to be going into too much detail on the screen, so you'll see that there's only bullet point notes. And the reason for that is that, particularly at the moment, seeing as a lot of us are working from home, it'd be better for you guys to watch the episode of The Sweeney as part of your revision, as part of your studies, and then to add to what I've put down here with your own ideas, perhaps with some evidence to back up what you're saying, just in case one of those questions in your exam is asking you about characters. So let's get started then. Uh, Brooker is the first character that we meet in the Sweeney and he's sort of like a fixer character. So he deals with money. We see him paying off a couple of people within the episode. He's also the person who organizes all the materials, all the equipment. He does all the running around of Campbell. So Campbell will issue an order and then Brooker's the one who goes, runs around and organizes everything. We also know that he's loyal, which is perhaps a, a sort of unexpected element or perhaps a, a way in which he subverts the idea of sort of your traditional criminal in that he's very very loyal he's loyal to Kemble we find out a little bit of backstory about the two of them right at the end of the episode whereby they sort of grew up together and they care about each other and and that sort of thing and so Booker's sort of stuck with Kemble all the way through we could also argue that, again, as a sort of subversion of our expectations, he's very, very cautious. So when they're planning what they're going to do, Merrick's all sort of gung-ho and wants to go on with it and wants to like get it done straight away, whereas Brooker applies a little bit more caution to it. You could also argue that he's sort of traditional in the sense that he's a little bit rough around the edges. He's not as sort of presentable as Kemble or Merrick. He's sort of very traditional, he doesn't care about his appearance, and so that makes him more of an expected trope within the crime drama genre. We could also argue that he's emotional as well, so when Kemble dies, he jumps down to sort of be with him and try to wake him up even though we both know, or everybody knows, that he's dead. Regan then. So Regan, like Luther, has got this reputation and his reputation is that he's dedicated, he's very um, sort of known for doing what he wants and because he does what he wants he then often clashes with management which we see within the episode itself anyway. He's also quite perceptive, he seems to work things out quite quickly but to balance that out he's also very human because he's clumsy. Now he's traditionally masculine not only for a modern audience but particularly for the contemporary audience who are watching this as well and he does conform to these sort of stereotypical crime drama tropes particularly again for the period in which this is set. So at the time we would have expected the police to be more hands-on, to be more physical, we would have expected the police to be spending a lot of time outside chasing down leads as opposed to it being sort of a desk job or being inside the police station that we see with Luther. Jenny is very traditionally feminine, not only in the way that she looks, but in the way that she acts as well, because she does fall into the damsel in distress category um, of characters when she's sort of cornered by American Brooker. She's fairly loyal to Regan in that it takes a while before she um, sort of gives him up and gives up his name, but she also acts as a support to him, which we see at the very end of the episode. Now, in this particular episode, we don't see too much of Jenny, but she's introduced just the same as all the other characters are introduced, and she does appear both at the beginning and end of the episode, so it's likely that we'll see more of her in, fu in future episodes and perhaps gain a little bit more information about her as the series continues. Carter is very knowledgeable. He acts as Regan's sidekick, but he sort of compliments Regan in that they're very, although they get on very well, they're, the way they act and the way the characters are presented is sort of as opposites. So Carter conducts his job more by the book than Regan does. He's again very loyal to Regan, um, and he's also quite easygoing and easy to talk to, which links into the final point, which is that Carter sort of fulfills this audience expectation again of the period that the police were sort of out on the street interviewing people checking in the local neighborhood making these sort of connections with the general public which is what Carter does Carter seems to have the sort of street knowledge of of the area whereas Regan um, sort of doesn't and so Regan relies on Carter throughout the episode to provide him with this sort of information 
Haskins then is very uptight. We get the impression that he's a higher class than the two others, um, sort of Regan and Carter, because of the way that he's dressed. The way that he's dressed also tells us that in terms of his personality, he's smart and organised, which is partly where this confrontation and sort of issues between him and Regan come about because he likes things to be neat and organized and he likes to be in control so because Regan is somebody who doesn't want to be controlled we get this sort of confrontation happening right away ultimately though he is a good man so through the first episode you're sort of not entirely sure where Haskins loyalties lie and it's only at the end that you realize that even though he clashes with Regan even though he doesn't necessarily see eye to eye with him that actually he really does care about the job and he wants to do what's right Merrick then shows off we know that right from the beginning when we see the sort of clothes that he's wearing he appears to be quite wealthy through the dress codes that he has they're very bright they seem to be good quality um, so you could argue that he's a little bit ostentatious in that respect and that sort of subverts what you would expect of a uh, sort of criminal who wants to lay low and not draw attention, although equally perhaps shows us that crime in this instance is paying for Kemble and Kemble's gang. Unlike Brooker, Merrick is very, very cruel. So Merrick's the one who sort of eggs uh, Brooker on to take the iron and to perhaps sort of threaten Jenny with it so Merrick seems to be quite cruel. He's also the one who um, packs the gun and who has the gun ready, even though Kemble has said that he doesn't want anything to do with that. He's very eager to move very quickly, which suggests that he doesn't think of the consequences of his actions. And he's also quite manipulative as well, particularly of Kemble. So we have the shot that, that I particularly like, where there's sort of a layering of Brooker, Kemble and Merrick, as they're so, they sort of walk in front of one another. And Merrick sort of eggs Kemble on in a way that he's like, you know, we can't wait, we've got to keep going, even though perhaps the more sensible thing to do from their perspective would be to wait. Billy then is street smart. He follows a reputation. So Billy is trying to get his own reputation, but he also has some already because his older brother is in prison and we know that he sort of comes from this family where perhaps the boys are getting themselves into trouble. Of the two of them, both Billy and Stupid Billy is obviously the leader and that partly because he has this sort of quick thinking. So when he sees the photos, he recognises their worth. He knows that that would be perhaps a way of getting himself up in the organisation and so he goes and takes them straight to Brooker. Stupid, on the other hand though, is as per his name, quite stupid, quite clumsy. And we can see that from his dress codes as well. He seems very unkempt and not very well put together. So not only does that sort of link with his name, but it also acts as this element of comic relief. He's the character who we get to laugh at so that it breaks the tension throughout the episode. He also has a lack of knowledge both intellectually and also in terms of sort of street smarts and um, sort of the gangs and the people who are holding all of the power. He doesn't have that sort of knowledge either. He's a bit of a filler character at the moment in that we don't really get to see a lot of him in this episode although it could be that you're asked about minor characters rather than major characters in your exam so that would be something to consider here and finally then at Kemble so Kemble is smart he's calculated he's very clearly wealthy which we can see through the background that he's very often set in and also through his dress codes as well Unlike some of the other characters, he's more cautious and that perhaps tells us how he's managed to get as far as he has in that he um, sort of thinks things through and he weighs up the pros and cons of things. He's very, very powerful and controlling and we know that just through how many people he manages to control and to organise to try and break this guy out of prison. In contrast though, he is against weapons so he doesn't want any guns being taken on the job that they're doing as well. Now, in some respects, that makes him sort of non-stereotypical and we don't expect it but on the other hand it might just again in indicate his intellect and how he thinks about things and he thinks about all potential consequences rather than just jumping straight in. We've also got that he sort of contrasts with Brooker. Now we know that they have the same origin because the two of them talk about their past and how they were growing up but we can see how perhaps Kemble has succeeded where Brooker hasn't perhaps risen as far as Kemble has in the organisation but he does remain loyal to, to Brooker and they do stick together so it's something else to consider. 
Hopefully you found that useful. There's not too many key terms here. So maybe what you guys can do is instead of making note cards or instead of making um, definitions, you can have a look and see what are the key terms you could add to this list through your own uh, interpretations, through your own comments and notes that you make on the characters as well. If you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the button down below. If you hit the bell icon next to it, you get notifications every time I post another video. You can leave me messages, questions, comments, ideas through the comments section below, or you can get in touch with me through social media at media underscore revision on Twitter or GCSE media revision on Instagram. I don't use Instagram too much, but I am still on there if you guys want to pose any questions or comments. And I shall see you guys tomorrow for another video.